Yeah. And so we're going to hop into the best conversation there's going to be. Oh, yeah. Um, at least for today. The Los Angeles Dodgers are one of the best te- organizations of the past decade. And you love them or hate them. It's true. Uh, the team has got into the postseason. They've only won once. They got into the postseason every year since 2013. And last year they set their they set the best record since 2001. They set their franchise record of 111 and 51 wins. And then they lost because the Dodgers choke in the postseason. That's what they do. Evan Phillips was the best reliever in the National League. And that was their season. Freddie Freeman was fantastic. Movie Beth was fantastic. Trey Turner was fantastic. Their entire starting rotation was fantastic and injured. And then they lost. I mean, the Dodgers are going to dodge her, man. I don't know. Um, I, last season, I thought they were going to break the record the whole season up until, like, the very end. I think they had a couple week, like, weaker weeks. Like, it wasn't even week months. They, they, they had weak weeks. They never really stumbled and fell. They really only had rough weeks. They didn't. Yeah. They they never really fell over that bad. I I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So they did lose the most war out of any team this off season. Tom, who they lose? Trey Turner to the Phillies. Tyler Anderson to the Angels. Justin Turner with sad face emoji. Brad to the Red Sox. <laughs> Cody Bellinger to the Cubs. I'm not reading. I'm not reading that one. <laughs> Chris Martin to the Red Sox, Andrew Heaney to the Rangers, Craig Kimbrell to the Phillies. Man, the Phillies are just stealing everyone. Um, Joey yeah, Gallagher to the Twins. <laughs> yeah, no, they're really not stealing anyone. <laughs> Tommy Canely to the Yankees, and Trevor Bauer is gone. He's in He's... Japan now. <laughs> so Trey Turner is obviously the biggest blow here, but you did, you weren't re-signing Trey Turner. Like it just wasn't going to happen. His heart was set on the East Coast the entire time. Like the Padres made a very competitive bid and he just he just declined it. I think he got four hundred million from the Padres and he said no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not like you know, you read these names off, and the only ones that really hurt are obviously Trey Turner and well, Justin Turner hurts because he's a his Dodgers legend now, but he's not necessarily like the superstar. He was very valuable though. I mean, Andrew Heaney was good last season, but that was truly a breakout, you know. He was he really broke out last year just because of the Dodgers organization. Brad, what do yeah. you think about that? I, I, Andrew Heaney is a strikeout or home run pitcher. There's nothing else. Yeah, good luck to the Rangers, man. They're gonna have to deal with that. Um, but other than that, these guys that are, that left are not really like the biggest guys. And I, I mean, you can talk talk about who who they took in in the off season, and I, I'll I'll give my take on everything here. All right, so we'll kick it off with the best pitcher of all time. Clayton Kershaw resigns one year and $25 million contract. Um, I mean, when he's healthy, as proven by last year, he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. There is no arguing. And he's on it. Honestly, if it weren't for you constantly hearing about him through me, you would also underrate how freaking good he still is. Well, it good on the field is different than good in general because you can't be good if you're not playing baseball, you know, you got to get consistent outings from him. And we haven't seen that in years, two years, probably. Right. Uh, 2019. Jeez, man. That's even longer. Okay. I mean, that, there's only that, been that, two full seasons since that's a little concerning. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, does it correlate? Yes. He's good pitcher, but, but he has to be pitching, you know, to rack up everything. Um, but obviously the one year extension or one year deal, um, is a little bit less concerning from an organization, you know, than like a big extension for a guy that's super injury prone. Yeah. And then they went and got Shelby Miller. He threw seven innings with the giants last year and he looked really good. And they get him for the modest price of $1.5 million this year. That's going to be worth itself times four. You know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you already know that they, they they're buying cheap this off season. I mean, the biggest the biggest one they did was Clayton Kershaw, and that was twenty five million. Uh, just, I mean, they're they're pulling a raise, and I I, I know why, but we'll I don't get to that like in a minute. Why. Um, I do. They signed Jason Hayward to a minor league contract, which looks like a fantastic deal right now. Like he's been stellar through spring training. They kind of reworked his swing, trying to get it back to what it was with the Braves, just trying to minimize the hand movement, minimize the lower body movement, and just let him do his thing, like get the bat to the ball and let the speed and some of the contact play. He's been a star in spring training. I mean, it's not saying too much because it's spring training, but I mean, 
the way he's been playing, he's going to make the starting lineup. Not not the starting lineup, the bench, obviously. But he's going to get some playing time on the Dodgers. And, I mean, if he can prove himself, he might earn, earn a starting position on this team, or at least yeah. a DH. And they got uh, J.P. Fireisen from the Rays. They had DFA'd him because of injuries. And they also got Alex Reyes uh, for one year, $1.1 million. Those are just two relievers that are going to come back later in the year. The Dodgers have four or five relievers right now that are injured that are just going to come back as like their own trade deadline would actually have, without having to trade away any prospects. That's going to be cool when it happens. Uh, and then, honestly, the move I'm most excited for, they got Noah Syndergaard for a year and $13 million. We've already seen the fruits of his labor. He's looked fantastic in spring training. I think he's thrown eight innings. He's allowed one walk. He's been very, very good. And it doesn't look like the velocity's back, but it looks like that prime changeup is back. And what did the Dodgers do with Tyler Anderson? They gave him his changeup back. So I like it. Um, we got JD Martinez for a year 10 million. They just traded him for Justin Turner. They got Jimmy Nelson for a year 1.2 million, David Peralta for a year 6.5 million. And the move at the time that just looked like looked really bad was Miguel Rojas uh acquiring him from the Marlins for Jacob Amaya. Sure, it was depth, but then Gavin Lux he got hurt for the whole year. He tore his ACL in spring training, and now Miguel Rojas looks to be the starting shortstop. Yeah, I mean. That's just, I mean, that's just a lucky move, I guess. I mean, you couldn't have expected Gavin Lux to, you know, go down like that. And that obviously tanks their stock just a little bit. But um, Mika Rojas has been playing well in spring training, right? I mean, he's yeah. been doing pretty well. Very so well. clearly the, the the analytics on this team are crazy. I mean, you can probably help Noah Syndergaard revamp his career a little bit. I remember last season and even the season before, he's not a guy that goes uh, particularly like deep into games. Um, but I mean, if you can get four good innings out of them every day, I think that's pretty valuable. Um, so we have more than four innings out of Noah Syndergaard. I don't, every... I don't think so. I'm going to check. He I'm was also bad game. last year. Checking his game logs, dude. Hold on. All right. Last year, you can't just look straight at last year's his first year from Tommy John. He went, all right. In the regular season over five and pretty much every start, except for the ones where he got shelled. Yeah. Hold on, let's see. Right, we'll he was very at... good in 2018, uh, 2019, 2018. 2019, but, uh, he's going almost six and seven innings almost every start. That was before TJ, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I This guy's a mystery to me. I, every time, because ironically, every time I go to a baseball game, whether it was, you know, in Anaheim or at in D.C. watching the Nats, it always seems to be Noah Syndergaard pitching, and he always gets shelled. Maybe it's just the way the way I watch baseball, but it, every time I watch this guy, and it's ironic because I watch him a lot, he always gets shelled. I don't know. I'm not that high on him. I'm not sure. He's only 30 years old, so he could have a potential like you know like a potential like Justin Verlander e uh, second half of his career, you know, where he just somehow you know recovers from like a mid career, you know, stumble. But mm. I don't know. Coming back from TJ is hard. Uh, only went 80 innings last season. I think that's uh, that number is obviously going to go up uh, this season. But I'm I'm curious how he makes it back. I, I think if there's any team that he can be on after TJ, it, it's probably the best that he's on the Dodgers. You know, because he'll he'll he. I mean, yeah, he'll be all right. Yeah, and so with that rotation, it looks like Clayton Kershaw at the helm. Julio Arias is the two. I'm kidding. It's Arias at the one. But Noah Syndergaard right now projects to be their three. Dustin May, their four. And right now, just with some injuries, Ryan Pepio would be the five. Uh, right now, Tony Gonsolin and Walker Bueller are injured. Bueller's probably out for the whole year. Gonsolin has a sprained ankle right now that's supposed to just keep him out through opening day. And then he'll build up as the season goes on, which would be helpful, though, because he was the guy last year that kind of flamed out towards the end. Yeah, I mean, this is this is probably the weakest part of the lineup, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's still really good. <laughs> I'm telling you, Dustin May has the tools of a superstar, but he's not going to be held. I guarantee you he gets hurt again. I'm concerned about the elbow. Another guy I'm concerned about is Clayton Kershaw, obviously. We're Tony Gonsolin. At this point. Tony, Tony Gonsolin, did he go down last year? With yeah, the with elbow the forearm strain. Is he, is he good to go now, though, other than yeah. the ankle? Yeah, I, I think that was more of like he had never thrown more than like 55 innings or something like that. And he was at 124 and it just kind of kind of pulled. I on mean, him. yeah, I, I think I think it, he was a little overrated. Did he did he start the All-Star game? No. Or did was he, he, came, in, he came in later? Oh, that's right. He came in later and just stunk it up. But yeah. I, I think I, I think that Tony Gonsolin is a little overrated, but he's a guy that like 
broke out last year and kind of like elevated his game pretty pretty nicely. Mm. I think he's a good three. I think he's a good three starting pitcher. Not not anything higher than that. But that's probably where he's going to fall in. I've not seen much of Ryan Pepiot. Is he is he young? Yeah, Ryan Pepio. Um, Pepio. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's he's young. Uh, last year, he kind of struggled with his control because during spring training in 2022, they tried to teach him the sweeping slider. And from his motion, it kind of threw off his release point. So he didn't really have his four seam or change up. Change up being like his primary pitch. It's got potential for a 70 grade pitch. Um, and right now it's fixed. They kind of, if you look below, we're in like my prospect preview of this team. There's a couple of them. Um, he rediscovered a gyro slider by just changing a thumb placement. And when everything's right, he's got a fastball that plays up to it plays up its velocity because he's got one of the best extensions in the league. Uh, he's only walked one person this spring, which is a really big sign for him. So I like it. God, I just I, I just scrolled down to the prospect central section for like so long. What did you do? <laughs> if you look <laughs> under prospect central, the first thing is oh boy. Are, are these all top 100 or what? Yes. No. Wait. Pepio graduated, he, okay. but. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to that after we go through the lineup. I got a lot of questions for that. Um, But, I mean, starting rotation, I think, is there going to be the weak point? I don't think it's because of talent. I don't think there's any you know shortage of talent. I think it's just going to be an injury problem. I think one of these guys is going to go down. And I hope maybe it gives a chance for one of the guys in the farm system to come up. Uh, Bobby. Bob, <laughs> Bobby. Um, I don't know if he's, is he, is he at that point yet? Is he in double A right now? Bobby's we'll in triple A. Okay. Um, I, right. Yeah. Right go ahead, now go ahead, their bullpen, ahead. the best pitcher in the national league, Evan Phillips, best reliever, this excuse guy. me. Oh my he, God. Look, go look at his stuff from last year. It was unbelievable. Go look at a picture of it. He looks like a, he looks like a freaking like. He looks like he's going like to sell you mail, a used car. It's like a mailman. Yeah. Um, and then you got lefty Alex Vessia, all, one of the best lefty relievers in the National League. Bruce Dargradwell, 102 mile an hour sinkers. Caleb Ferguson, Yancy Almonte, Shelby Miller. For some reason, Phil Bickford's still employed. And Jimmy Nelson. I like um, this besides freaking Phil Bickford. Bruce Dargradwell, despite throwing 102, gets absolutely lit up sometimes. And he has a very bad control problem. So it's like, I'm a little concerned about that. I'm. I'm more excited about the Hurt guys, to be honest. I mean, Daniel Hudson, Blake Trinan. Um, I'm not even gonna try to like Alex Reyes. I I always I always mispronounce this guy's name. Fire Eisen. Fire Eisen. He they're all they're all quality relievers. I mean, they're gonna fit in this rotation. I mean, this bullpen pretty well, and I think it will turn out to be one of the best bullpens in baseball. Um, but that yeah, obviously that's not where my concern lies. It's in the rotation. I just, but this bullpen's fantastic. If you if the starter can make it four innings. This bullpen's got it from there. They're very, they're very deep. Yeah, and you mentioned Bruce Dargradwell has a bad walk rate. Um, it was one of the best nope. in baseball. Oh man, hold on. I th- and not best in baseball, but it was pretty good. It was four point six percent, which is not bad at all. Uh, he just his thing is he doesn't strike a lot of people. I've been at two forty seven expected ERA last year. That's not bad at all. His thing is health. Uh, he's last year he threw the most innings he's ever thrown. And it was only it wasn't even fifty. It's just he's a confusing guy. Usually with high velocity guys, you see like a high strikeout rate. He's like a power pitcher type of guy, mm-hmm. but he doesn't strike people out, and it's just it's just weird. I don't know what what is it? He's not a pitch to contact guy. Is it's he? soft contact though. His average exit velocity was eighty five miles an hour. Yeah, because he's a sinker baller. Yeah, that just not, pr- destroys your hands. Not even runs in. It destroys your hands. He is very young. He's only twenty four. So I mean, yeah, they can they still have time to develop him into. I mean. I, I think when, when he was initially traded, he was like projected to be like that guy or, you know, like the closer for the Dodgers in the future. Mm-hmm. And he can still be that. Um, It's just, he hasn't really taken the step yet. And I think he will soon. I'm mm-hmm. not sure about this season though. I mean, Evan Phillips is pretty much solidified that spot. Not really. Cause last year the Dodgers have deployed their best relievers in the biggest situations. That's why Greg Kimbrell was never put in before the ninth inning. Um, I like this bullpen. It's an analytically driven team, so it's going to have a good bullpen. That's kind of just how it works nowadays. Yeah, and then there's I, the I wish. Yeah, Tom, what's that lineup? Uh, rivaling the Padres, starting three or four. We got Mookie Betts batting first, right field. Freddie at first. Will Smith at catcher. Max Muncy at third base. Overrated. Uh, JD Martinez at DH. David Peralta in left. Trace Thompson in center. Miggy Vargas at second, and then Miggy Rojas at shortstop. Miggy, do you refer to both of them as Miggy? 
Mickey Mickey yeah, off the yeah. Medi, yeah. God. Austin Barnes at catcher on the bench. Yanni Hernandez, Chris Taylor, and Jason Hayward. I've never heard of Yanni Hernandez before. They got him from the athletics. It it's gonna when? be James it, this offseason. Um James Outman. If it's not James Outman, I will personally drive to or I'll I'll drive to Chavez Ravine myself and yell at Andrew Friedman. Be honest with me. Do you think do you think David Peralta deserves a spot and left over James Outman? <laughs> Have you seen how good right David now? Peralta has been this season? This spring training and world baseball classic. That is true. But in the regular season, he is actually is he a guy that's gonna be impacted by the shift? Is he a guy that, that pulls baseballs at a, a high rate? I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. He's a dodger. You can throw pretty much everything out the window. If a guy struggles, I mean, reinvent him. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like the spot that's most open on this team is probably left field and center field for Trace Thompson and David Peralta, but both of them have been absolutely balling out in the World Baseball Classic. So it's like there's not much room on this team. I mean, more room than last season because last season was an all-star team. But mm. I think now more than ever, these guys got to come up eventually. It's or you're, you're wasting talent on the minors right now. Or um, I mean, just wait for the trade deadline when Corbin Burns is available. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? You're gonna trade. You you would you would trade like James Alvin away for for Corbin Burns in a heartbeat. That's fair. Um. Oh yeah, yes, he's, <laughs> yes, he's starting pitching desperately. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how desperately we need that when we head down to Prospect Central. We got Bobby Miller as our number one graded guy he's been we've been hearing about him for a while even tom knows about him that's saying a lot fastball sits 97 to 98 for 67 innings uh in 2022 he threw 112 in a third innings pitch with a 31 percent strikeout percentage and only eight percent walk still not great for the walks but it's not bad he has a brand new curveball which has the ceiling to be his best pitch and remember he sits 97 to 98 he's got a mid 80s splitter a low 90 slider like potential ace here we got gavin stone who honestly is my favorite of all the dodgers prospects he's got a potential 70 grade changeup. um it it's fantastic he's young he's good he's got great control with above average stuff uh there's been recent stuff you know you know sarah's you know stuff plus like the whole mm. ooh, it moves oh okay um oh yeah, yeah 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 it moves uh basically it determined that if your stuff is really good that's more likely an indicator that you're going to be good better than you have like good control. But when you have both of them, um, Jason DeGrom, um, Sandy Alcantara, St- uh, Gavin Stone, uh, you're going to be one of the best pitchers in the major leagues. He's got among the highest swing strike rates, swinging strike rates. Good job, Brad. In all of minor league baseball, uh, you got James Altman. He's got a career 1409 OPS in major league baseball. Um, I think that's just Bonzian right there. Uh, he's got above average speed and quality defense, high strikeout rate, and a very consistent OPS throughout the minor leagues. Michael Bush, yeah, there's a lot of them here. There's a lot of them because the Dodgers have a deep prospect system. We're number two in the league. Okay. Isn't that nice, Tom? Uh, okay. And, and Michael Bush has a ceiling of 30 fielding, a 30-grade fielding. That's really bad. He kind of projects as a DH. Uh, he's max months. He won max months. He's good without the defense. And then lastly, Miguel Vargas. Damn, that's a lot of them. He's going to be good. He's an opening day starter for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He is a doubles header with good contact, and he's a Mark Canna comparison. Let's remember, Mark Canna, while you and Samson may cook on him, has posted an average of 3.2 F4 the past three full seasons. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm just... I'm just now looking at this. It's like, you're, you're suffering from success here, man. You, you, you're not... You're, 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 you're like... You're impacting the careers of these extremely talented players by going out and buying out these these stars that would start on LB lineups. So you're just keeping these guys in the minors. I, I James Outman, Miguel Vargas, Bobby Miller, they should all be at the major league level, I think, right now. And they should have probably at the last season, too. James Outman played great last year. All these guys are just trapped down there. I, I I'd almost think it's bad for you guys because you, the sooner you get these guys up, the more comfortable they're going to get in the pro level. You know, what do, what do you think about, like, the future of this team? Do you think you're just going to go keep buying out players or keep trading for players or, you know, extending players? Or do you think you're going to eventually you, – you've mentioned it a lot. You're like, you got to let the young guys play, but there's not that much room to let the young guys play. I mean, the only really young guy on this team now is Miguel Vargas going up. So you, I, I would like – I mean, I'm not, I'm a Giants fan. I'm fine with them, you know, shooting themselves on the foot. But I think you got to give Alvin a chance. you got to give Stone a chance. you got to give Bobby Miller a chance. 
a lot of these guys are are restricted. Stone and Miller need a bit of like tuning in the minor league still. They're probably 2024 20, pitchers, um, yeah. which I'd be perfectly fine with. James Outman, I want in the opening day outfield. I don't really care much for Michael Bush, in all honesty. He can go get sent to another team. Uh, Miguel Vargas, you know what? He's going to be in the opening day roster. There's playing opportunity right there, which just leaves Ryan Pepio. Uh, I'd like to see him get consistent outings this season, whether it's in a long relief role or he's starting pitcher six. They go to a six-man rotation, which I think would be really good for their health. Um, I just want to see Ryan Pepio get a genuine chance this year. If he and James Outman don't get genuine chances, then it's the Dodgers shooting themselves in the foot, not giving their young kids a shot. That's what I'm saying, dude. And just before we get into our projections, uh, the reason that they're not spending is so that they can have the biggest offseason in history next season. And this is, you know, it's the most unexpected thing to see the Los Angeles Dodgers not dropping hundreds of millions of dollars in the offseason. Brad, are you against the Shohei move next year? Yes. Yes? Yes. Why? Oh, you think he's going to like a lot of money? It's going to be so much money for one, but for, for two, I think that there's just a lot of things that the Los Angeles Dodgers could go after. I think Shohei Otani, I believe in him. He's fantastic. He's proven he's the best baseball player in the world, if not Mike Trout. But you don't know how this ages. No one's ever done this before. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if his arm flames out or if his, you know, if his arm flames out or something happens on the pitching side, he can always just become a full-time hitter, full-time left fielder. But at the same time, not only does Shohei bring talent, but he also brings in a very large fan base, which would also generate a lot more money too. So, and Brad, it's happening whether you like it or not. I think, I know. I, I think with, without a doubt it's happening. They're saving so much. I mean, Brad, they, they're, they're buying these guys out for like $1 million. Like the, the, the deals they did this off season were, you know, expected of, of teams like the Guardians, you know, not not spending that much money. So okay, but would you clear- spend a would you spend five million dollars on Shelby Miller? Oh Brad, I'm saying they're scheming, dude. They're scheming. They're getting ready. They're getting ready for something, man. They're building something here. And I still think they have a chance to win the NL West. And that's saying something, but I I obviously think it's going to the, the Padres. Brad, right. lead us off with the predictions. All right. The mighty Dodgers are gonna go ninety four and sixty eight. I think that it's a fair representation. I think they're among the best teams in the National League. But part of my projection is we're going to f- let the young guys play. We're going to give them an opportunity to fail, but they're still, you know, Freddie Freeman, top five player in baseball, Mookie Betts, top 10 player in baseball. Like, there's still those guys. Will Smith's a top three catcher in baseball. You have all these guys in pretty important positions on the field as well, might I add that can give the young guys support and leadership to develop Uh, for their MVP. I have Freddie Freeman. He's one of the best pure hitters in baseball, and it doesn't really get recognized as much as it should Uh, for their Cy Young. I'm going to be lame and put Julio Arias, but I don't want to be lame. So let's just say Noah Syndergaard Um, uh, for their breakout. I put James Altman slash Ryan Pepio. Uh, You got to go with one of the rookies somewhere. Uh, Stevs didn't do that. And then for most important, I did put Julio Arias. He's got to be the, like, got to throw 170, 180 innings, quality innings too. Yeah, I mean, I'm nearly right there with you. I'm a little a little confused about the most important player. I mean, obviously having Julio Arias pitch a ton of innings is important, but um, I'll, I'll mention him in a second. I got him going 92 and 70, only two wins below Brad. Um, I think that's close to – I think they're, they're, this team has such a low, uh, a high floor – um, I think they're a little bit more reliable than teams like the uh the Padres and the Mets. Uh, I got their MVP being Freddie. Uh, it's got to be Freddie. He's as Brad mentioned, very underrated at this point. I mean, he's just, just pure hitter. Doesn't doesn't do much. I mean, he actually feels pretty well too. He's probably he's the best first baseman in baseball. We already talked about that. Go watch that episode. Um, but for the most important player, it has to be Clayton Kershaw because if you can get 120 innings out of this guy, that is so much more important than getting 180 innings out of Julio Arias. I, I mean. Because as you mentioned, Brad, if if you are standing by this, Clayton Kershaw when he's healthy is better than Julio Urias, right? Yeah. So so Clayton Kershaw being healthy is more important than Julio Urias. So you're asking season. Clayton Kershaw to repeat his last season? No, I'm, I'm I'm expecting him to. Well, if he's pitching, he will repeat what he did last season. I'm saying he can if he can survive more than 120. Wait, did he pitch 120 innings last season? 126. Okay, go 150 or 180 or something. We I'm need, okay. We need, okay with 180. 
They, <laughs> they, they need innings from him. I don't know. What is his max? Hold on, let me look up Clayton Kershaw. Um, What's the max he's ever gone? It's 213. Indeed, 213? Yeah. Was that in his MVP season? No, that was 2015 when Jake Arrieta won the Cy Young Award. That was such a good Cy Young race, though, man. We got to talk Chico about Rieta that. was really not that good that year. That was such a good race, though. There's so, so many guys. Oh, man. There's so many guys that season. Dude, he went 232 innings one, one year. Oh, my gosh. He used to be a guy that would just go 200 innings every year. Yeah. 233, then 227, then 230. Yeah, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting my most important Clayton Kershaw stealing at about 175 innings. If you can get that from him, that is value. That is the most important thing that this team needs. Um. Cy Young, boring, Julio Urias. Um, Brad, I love Julio Urias. He's in a contract season two, so he's got something to prove. Um, he's going to be great. You already know. Uh, I went Miguel Vargas for breakout. Uh, I mean, keeping it different, I guess. I like his tools. Uh, I watched that. Brad, you watched that Mookie Betts vlog? No, I haven't uh, where yet. He's, he's hitting with, he's hitting with Miggy Vargas. He's pretty, he's pretty likable. You know, the characters on this team are pretty likable, but I got Miggy breaking out his first season. Is his, is his hand good now? Can he swing now? Yeah. He's so okay. I think so, his first like 20 at bats in spring training, he couldn't, he couldn't hit. swing, yeah, yeah. And now <laughs> yeah. his batting average is already almost back at 300. Yeah, so he'll, he'll be all right. And I think, I think this guy, along with Altman, is another guy that was just waiting to come up and you know, being blocked off by you know, uh, not only Trey Gavin Lux, Turner. but also Trey Turner. Yeah, <laughs> so I, this is a guy that's been waiting for his opportunity. I think he's going to capitalize here this season. Yeah, and so Stavs had them at the highest of any of us at 96 and 66. Um, very foreseeable. We're all kind of in the same range. Uh, MVP Freddie Freeman, Cy Young Julio Urias. Wow. This is shocking. Yeah. For the breakout, he had Jason Hayward. What the heck? Okay. Um, you know, that's not the worst take considering how good he's playing. I just don't know how he's gonna hold it up for an entire season. I mean, we haven't really seen a good season from Jason Hayward since what, like 2019, 2018. Probably longer than that, actually. I think it's generous. That, that's being generous. It's been a very long time since we've seen this prime Jason Hayward. And even in his prime, he wasn't really regarded as the best hitter. He was regarded as, you know, an elite fielder. Um, you remember when the Cubs won the World Series and he was like, man, I deserve this. And he hit like a buck 67 or something like that in the playoffs. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, this guy for his career has a, has a WOBA at 313, which is... Is that is that below average or is that about average? It's below average. So, I mean, even in his prime in like 2016, 2017, he was still around that range. So he really never was that that hitter that people maybe are comparing him to. I think his prime was more defensive oriented. Um, I don't know if he still got that. He's in his age, what, 33 season. I see the potential for an offensive breakout, but I'm not sure how good he is in the field anymore. I haven't really we haven't really seen a full season from him in the field in a while. Yeah. But and I mean, then, the career of 39 outs above average is wild. Yeah. And then lastly, Stevs had Miguel Rojas as their most important. It's just mainly shortstop as a whole. Um, I would like to disagree with that. Uh, I think Miguel <laughs> Rojas will be perfectly fine. He's going to hit league average and play a really good shortstop, but he's not the most important piece. The Dodgers can always go out and fill that spot if they need to. Miguel Vargas is literally a shortstop who's going over to second base. Yeah. Um, I mean, sure yeah, be fine. yeah, they're going to, they're going to do some weird, they're going to do, um, you know what they're going to do, Brad, they're going to go biggest package deal of all time. They're going to do Willie Adamas and Corbin Burns for your entire farm system. What would you think about that? That, that is a potential. I, think I would a do. All right. Dodgers trade deadline. And then we'll wrap up this episode. Dodgers trade deadline. The Brewers are out of contention. Willie Adamas and Corbin Burns for Bobby Miller, James Outman, um, and probably one more. Bush, you sneak Bush in there, right? Why not? Probably, yeah, probably Bush, and maybe a lower tier starting pitcher that's not on this list. Maybe, yeah, um, I mean, that's gonna be quite what's the, the kid's name. Uh, whoever we drafted in 2022, his name is 2022 Dodgers first round pick. <laughs> what first, pick did you guys have? You guys have the like, you guys have the last pick, or yeah. one of the last picks, right? Uh, oh, we didn't have a first round pick this year. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I think we went over the the thing a little bit too much in 2021. Uh, the Dodgers, Dalton rushing catcher. Uh, we have enough catchers. Our best prospect is Diego Cartaya, who's also a catcher. We also, also yeah. have Will Smith. Uh, Dalton rushing, Michael Bush, Bobby Miller, and like 
Guy Gyerson, for Corbin Burns, and Willie Adamas. Thank you all for listening to the 4A Baseball Podcast. We will see you all tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the Baltimore Orioles and the Tampa Bay Rays, another really unique clashing style of team. Uh, Thank you all for listening. If you want to interact with us at all, all social media links will be in the description below. We will see you all next time on the 4A Baseball Podcast. Peace.